welcome to this evening's event. We're going to just let a couple more people trickle in. We're so excited to have you. Um, welcome to the biotech industry spotlight. And thank you for choosing to spend your Thursday evening with everyone here. Um, it's always super exciting to be a part of these amazing events. Um, I know it may not be convenient for everyone to turn on your cameras, but I encourage you to do so. Um, let's meet everyone in attendance at this wonderful event this evening. Let me see if I see some faces pop through. Oh, there you all are. I see you. All right. You never know. You could be uh, sitting next to virtually your future classmate. Okay. Um, so we have a really cool agenda tonight. I'm really excited to share with you our guest speakers. So we're going to go ahead and get forward and move forward with introducing them. So you will have the pleasure tonight of meeting with Ms. Sylvia McAllister Castillo. She's our executive director of our MBA programs. You will also hear from the wonderful Ms. Audrey Phillips, who's the director of MBA admissions and recruitment, and Ms. Helen Kim, she's head of strategy and portfolio at Sataris. And she is a current MBA student here at Rady as well. So today, Ms. Sylvia will be discussing what makes Rady unique, and how Rady supports students in the biotech industry. She will also share and elaborate on some of our most popular biotech electives. Then we'll be able to hear um, from Ms. Helen Kim and her perspective, her perspective of what it's like to be a Rady student. And then lastly, we'll hear from Ms. Audrey Phillips to announce our newest fellowships. And then after we hear from our guest speakers, I'll close us out with some admissions deadline information, um, hopefully leaving us with plenty of time to answer any questions that you have at the end. Now, please help me in welcoming virtually our executive director, Ms. Sylvia McAllister Castillo. Well, that's quite the welcome, Sophia. Thank you. Um, so as Sophia mentioned, my name is Sylvia. I'm the executive director for MBA programs at the Rady School. Um, in my role, I work quite closely with the admissions and recruitment team, um, but I also work closely with our student affairs team, with the faculty, um, especially on matters of curriculum, um, career development, and I also work with our alumni relations team. Um, we're a small and dynamic school, um, but we're really, really lucky to have a close-knit community, um, and especially a great network of alumni who are really passionate about seeing us and our students succeed. Um, so I will be talking a little bit about how an MBA can help your career, um, and a lot of it is about solidifying some of the business fundamentals. Um, if you're looking to accelerate and grow, particularly into a management role. The MBA is probably, you know, that's probably why you're thinking of an MBA to begin with. Um, if you're looking to make a change, it's also a good option. And every year we get folks who come from very, very technical bioengineering, hard science backgrounds who are interested in moving into management and into business roles. Um, so we'll get bench scientists who are looking to start managing a lab, Sometimes we get folks who are in very, very technical engineering roles and looking to make a complete switch into a commercial role. Um, and sometimes we get doctors who are interested in moving into biotech companies as the chief medical officer, for example. Um, and so I imagine if you are here today, those are the kinds of career pivots and or accelerations that you might be interested in. Um, obviously the MBA is not a magic wand. Um, so if you are coming here um, and you are a welder or a ballerina or a professional tennis player, it's not going to automatically transform you into the CEO of a biotech company. Um, and if you're a scientist, it may take more than just the MBA to turn you into an investment banker. But for a lot of people, this is a really great first step in making that career pivot. Um, it's going to help you consolidate your experiences and really help you to systematize your business knowledge. You're going to learn a lot of theory and frameworks, particularly in our core curriculum, and those will help you tackle really difficult business problems. Um, and that helps you add value in, health, in, in healthcare, in biotech, in pharma, um, because they're notoriously complicated and very, very regulated industries. Um, you'll practice things like teamwork presenting, storytelling. You'll learn how to coach and manage people, how to influence other people in your organization. You'll learn how to manage projects um, and you'll learn how to negotiate. And those are skills that every single person will need to be successful in the biotech industry. Um, if you're not 100% 
sure what you want your next career step to be, this is also a good opportunity to experiment and try out new things and really take that deeper dive into learning about different sectors and functional areas. Um, you may be interested in what the marketing department does in your biotech startup. Um, you're just not sure. Um, you, they don't have time to, to answer a lot of your questions. You're not communicating with them. This is a great place to learn a little bit more to use that language and the theories of marketing and to be able to communicate with the marketing department on their own terms. Um, networking is crucial and that's a really important part of doing the MBA. Um, it is hard to succeed in your career or in business by yourself. You need to have that strong network. Um, and so at business school, you're not only gonna build a network with all the people in your classroom, but we'll teach you how to build and to maintain a network. Uh, we're lucky to have a strong network of people who come from every aspect of biotech. Um, we, you know, regardless of where you sit in biotech, you will benefit from meeting people in other areas and other industries. Um, you may need to pick up the phone and call a bank to negotiate a loan um, or an increase in your credit line, even if you're working in a biotech startup. So it helps if you know the person at the bank uh, because they were sitting next to you. Um, or maybe they were even on this Zoom call with you. Um, and finally, what I really love um, is how the byproduct of all of these things, that going through the experience together as a cohort, um, that means that you really will make lifelong friends. Um, and that's really one of the, the, the nicest things to see at graduation is how close all these people who used to be strangers have become over the course of the program. Um, so if I could get the next slide, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what um, makes UCSD and Grady in particular um, unique. Um, and it's really three things. Um, it's the strong STEM focus at Grady, but also across our entire campus. It's our world-class faculty, and it's the core curriculum and our electives. Um, and so if I can get that next slide. STEM really is fundamental um, to UC San Diego's history. Um, I don't know if everyone knows this and maybe there are some UCSD undergrads who are, are in this Zoom call who know about UC, more, even more than I do about UCSD, but we were specifically founded in order to create a powerhouse in engineering, biotech, environment, environmental science and health sciences in Southern California. Um, so our first um, constituent institution of UCSC was actually Scripps, the, the Oceanography um, Institute. Um, and we have really close ties to, to them, to the other Scripps, which is health focused, and with the Salk Institute, which is really just across the street from us. Uh, we've had 27 Nobel Prize winners for physics, chemistry, medicine, economics, and one Nobel Peace Prize winner, um, who is Lin Linus Pauly, who was actually more of a biotech guy. He was a, he was a biochem guy. Um, and we have more no, Nobel laureates than UCLA and Duke, which is really not bad for a school that was founded in the 1960s. Um, Rady also has a unique foundation school uh, story. We were the sort of the brainchild of the local San Diego business community who wanted to make sure that top tech and biotech talent would come to San Diego and that they wouldn't they didn't want to lose people to the Bay Area. Um, so they wanted to create a new business school from scratch with a focus on STEM and on innovation. Uh, they wanted to make sure that people were able to build on the strong technical skill sets that they were bringing to the program, uh, but also that, the, the, that the, the courses would foster creativity and innovation and would breed people who were entrepreneurs, people who are changing their organizations, learning to do things in new ways, um, and really make an impact on not just the business community, but also the community at large um, and humanity at large. Um, so we've always been so. Um, our faculty really do lean into that tradition. And so thank you for that next slide. Um, a lot of the professors will bring that into their research. Uh, they'll bring their research into the classroom. They'll teach you how to experiment uh, because really, you know, one of the fundamental pedagogical elements of our, of our 
of our teaching faculty is that they really believe that you don't just learn by doing, you learn by making smart hypotheses, testing them, recalibrating and testing again. So you don't just learn by doing, you learn by experimenting, figuring out what went wrong and do it again. Uh, this is Chris, oh, if you could just go back um, to, yep. So this is Chris Ovius. Um, he is the leadership professor um, just absolutely beloved by the students. Um, he teaches a class that kicks off the, the program, um, but he's trained as a scientist. And so he does a lot of work on emotions and emotional intelligence. Um, and so he teaches that leadership class from a really interesting way. Um, he's not the only fantastic professor that we have. Um, we, we do have mostly ladder rank faculty who are teaching in the core. Um, world-class researchers, this is a metric that we do really well in, in things like external ranking tables, um, and a lot of them have been poached from other top schools, um, which is just, you know, really, really fabulous. And if you haven't come to a, a, a class, you know, and sat in, um, it is really a remarkable experience to see some of these people at the front of the classroom. All right, if I could get that next slide. So I've talked a little bit about the core curriculum. Um, so the program is divided into roughly half um, the core curriculum, which everyone takes together and moves through as a cohort. Um, the core is really designed to give you a holistic view of an organization. Um, I imagine that many of you on this call work in one very specific function within, within an organization. There may be a CEO or two in this call, but I imagine that most people are really kind of in one department or one area. However, if you really want to understand a business, and especially if you want to lead a department or lead the business, you really need to understand all of the functions. And so even if your goal is to become a chief medical officer at Illumina, um, what you really need to bring to the table is that deep understanding of medicine, but you need to be able to talk to the finance department, to the marketing department, to the accounting department. You need to be able to make important decisions with stakeholders from across the organization. So you need to learn how to talk to them. So throughout the core, you'll take a deep dive into every functional area in an organization and you'll be doing it the ready way. So hands-on with a study group that's composed of a group of peers who are as diverse as possible. Um, we, we try to put people from different industries, different sectors, different job functions. Um, and of course, you know, there's, it's, it goes without saying that data and data-driven decision-making kind of is underpinning the entire core curriculum. Let me get the next slide. And finally, the electives. Um, and so this is a really great opportunity to either choose to focus on a specific industry, um, like biotech, um, a specific function, like you may be quite interested in marketing and you want to take a deeper dive into what a marketing department does. Um, you can take classes like consumer behavior, customer analytics, um, or you can choose to take electives that will sharpen your soft skills. So negotiations is one of the most popular electives that we have. Storytelling is another. Um, and there's a course on coaching, which is also pretty, um, pretty amazing. Uh, but this is also an opportunity to tailor your experience a little bit. Um, some people will want to get the program done as soon as possible, and so they'll stack their electives and, and really kind of make a hard charge to finish, you know, within two years. Some people will take it a little bit slower, um, and it really depends on, you know, what's going on with your work and your personal life. Um, you can take electives with other cohorts at different times and different formats. So not all of our electives are offered in every single format. So every year I get a student, you know, in my office or in my Zoom room being like, I wanted to take this elective and it's only available at this time and I can't come on the weekends. Um, and that is kind of the reality of having, you know, a mix of both ladder rank faculty and professionals from the local community is that some people can't, you know, some, some professors only teach on the, during the day and some professors only teach on the weekends. If you do have that flexibility, you can increase the choices. It's also a fabulous opportunity to work with new colleagues on class projects. So you really get to grow your network if you're taking electives outside of your nor sort of normal uh, class time. So I always encourage people to grow their network, take electives, 
um, on the weekends if you're an evening student, in the evenings if you're a weekend student, um, and all the time if you're a full-time student. If I could get the next slide. And so these are some of the popular electives that we've had um, offered in the last couple of years. Um, obviously, the biotech industry structure and strategy is super popular um, for people who are working in that industry. Um, it's taught by a professor of practice who has just gotten phenomenal ratings. Um, same thing for our managing healthcare and the life sciences. That's uh, an elective that's taught by a managing director at uh, BD. Um, who is just super lovely and is, has so many connections that he's able to bring in a host of guest speakers. Um, we have courses on healthcare economics, technology and innovation strategy, and then some courses that are just tend to be quite popular because of the skill sets that, that folks are looking for, like the decision analysis, um, project management is always really popular, and the CEO, board of directors, and corporate governance elective is, is probably one of the, the most popular ones that I've seen. Okay, and I think I am gonna turn it over to Audrey and to Helen um, and thank you all and I will stop talking now. Thank you, Sylvia. Well, I have the privilege of introducing Helen Kim who is an executive MBA student for the class of 2023. She currently works as the head of strategy and portfolio management for Sartorius, a global life science company selling research products and bioprocess solutions into biopharmaceutical industry and laboratories. Her background is in biology, and she has also worked in operations, R&D, and marketing. Thank you so much, Helen. Hello, everyone. Happy to be here, and I'm happy to say I will be graduating very soon, so I was actually probably on the same call about two years ago, so time does fly when you're in classes and working. Um, I did want to share some um, perspectives with you guys, and you guys are you know, more than welcome to ask me questions about my experience in, in the last um, uh, two years. Um, maybe if we can, oh, sorry. So this is the slide I sent you guys. It, it just looks a little bit different. But I do want to share maybe some experiences that maybe will answer some of your questions right off the bat. So um, I think through the courses that I've taken with Brady, it really gave me the confidence to speak up um, in, in my work as well as in you know, other social settings. Just because you get exposed to so many different topics, you know, from finance, um, from supply chain uh, to leadership courses. Uh, to the biotech course that I just recently took with Professor Bain, um, I was able to leverage that confidence and that knowledge base and expanded my role. I think within the first year, I moved from um, integration project management um, all the way now into strategy and M&A. So it really gave me the confidence to pursue what I really wanted. Um, along the way, I've met some really great friends as well. And um, if the expectation is that you're going to hold hands with 30 30 people in your class, that's not going to happen. I think you're going to just end up with a really core network um, of people from all walks of life, from all occupations where, you know, you know, you're going to keep um, a personal relationship with them. And these are people that you can count on um, as you go through the different um, developments uh, and, and career paths that you're going to have in the future as well. And some of my favorite courses, um, I think, uh, Sylvia, you already mentioned biotechnology. That was actually really one of my favorite classes, just because, um, like you said, you know, Professor Bain has such an industry knowledge and great network. He probably had the most relevant guest speakers throughout uh, the, the, I think, three months that, you know, I took his course. Um, VC Finance, Venture Capital Finance, surprisingly was probably my second most favorite uh, class as well. I'm not a numbers person. I didn't want to be CFO, but... For some reason, his lectures just really clicked and he gave me really great insider information about, you know, how VCs work, how startups work, how negotiation happens when we're talking about pre-valuation, post-money valuation, and how startups really kind of network and, and, and grow um, through their life cycle into their exit strategy. And then other classes I really enjoyed include the M&A with um, Professor Christina Beauty, um, as well as this one really intensive immersion course that was taught by Ailet um, Um, 
So if you're interested in more of those intensive courses, you, uh, Rady does offer immersion courses. I believe there's one where you can go to Israel and there's a local one as well to really just, if you're a weekender or evening class, it's really nice to just take some time off and really focus on the topic and really utilize what you learn through all these mythical classes and apply it to a real case study in a real um, business. So those are just some of my, the, my favorite courses um, in the last two years. Thank you so much, Helen. So I'm going to take you back. Let's rewind two years when you were kind of sitting here. Um, could you talk a little bit about why you selected Rady and how you felt it kind of aligned with your career goals? Uh, sure. So um, as you had indicated, I've been in life science um, for about 15 years now. And But within those 15 years, I've only worked at two companies, Miller for Sigma, uh, Sigma and now at Sartorius. And, and I have a broad breadth of experience in academics as well as um, operational excellence, project management. So I always knew that if I wanted to get to the C-suite, I, I did need those three letters behind my name. I think just for credibility, since I noticed that many executives had PhDs or masters, um, and also wanted to really develop a solid grasp of finance and budgeting, since I knew if I wanted to go into the executive management path, I had to be able to understand the numbers and be able to um, really analyze and trend out and understand, um, you know, what to do with finance and accounting and all of that. And for other reasons, I think, you know, San Diego is also a biotech beach um, it, with so many big companies I love, like Illumina, Thermo Fisher, the Salt Institute in Burnham. And my company, Sartorius, has been looking at targets, m and targets here. So just networking locally made a lot of sense. And for personal reasons, I live in San Diego. Brady is so close, it's about 20 minutes away. So it just really made sense that, you know, I, I stick with an MBA program um, at Brady. Wonderful, thank you. I know you hinted at this a bit in your answer, and then I know it's also a little bit of what you talked about, but just as important as your time in the classroom is, is the time outside of the classroom building connections with your classmates. Could you talk about some of the relationships you've made, both with people who are in the biotech industry, but also kind of across industries? Thinking about the 30 plus people in my cohort, I think uh, there, are people, there, are, there are maybe five or six, maybe six or seven different people that work in biotech, med device, uh, diagnostics. And for some reason, my court, cohort had a lot of R&D directors and people working in operations and supply chain. So I got to know them pretty well. And because most of the MBA assignments are group work, you really get to know your classmates, whether they're in biotech or they happen to be in software. Uh, there's a lot of people from Qualcomm. There are quite a number of people from the military. So you'll get to meet a lot of helicopter pilots, maybe, or Marines in your class. And I think one particular example would be Tim Ehrlich. Um, He's an R&D director for the med tech company at Edward Life Sciences. And I actually never really knew him through the court courses, but through the biotech company that we took together, we sat next to each other and we just decided that for an assignment uh, where we had to do an in-depth study around uh, a biotech company, we just decided to trade companies. So he did an in-depth uh, case study on Sartorius and uh, I did an in-depth uh, study on Edward Life Sciences. And so not only do we get to know about more about what each other did in our careers and at the companies and the divisions, but I also got to know that I found out his wife works there. I met some of his other colleagues at Edwards and we just started sharing a lot of, I think, career and people management stories. So that's just a really good example of how you will get to network with some of your cohort members as well. What a great idea to swap companies. I, I love that you all chose to do that. Um, so I have one more question for you, and then I know we we want to make sure we have time to, to cover our following topics. But when you are looking back at your experience now that you're kind of coming towards the end of your MBA journey, what do you feel has had the greatest impact on you? Pull everything together, um, because as in business, especially when um, it, it's really a team sport, when you think about if you work at a large corporation, it's about pulling different people together to work on a project, for example. You know, people from you know R&D, from marketing, from operations, from finance, um, from logistics, and even external vendors. I think it's being able to understand um, 
the KPIs and the objectives of each department and be able to talk to them and speak their language and kind of get behind um, what is it that you want to get out of a certain you know, project? How do I motivate that person? And bringing it all together so that you can holistically speak to why everyone needs to pull together for a certain project, whether it's you know, market growth or a new product launch. So I think it's being able to pull all those nuggets of knowledge from the class on the, in the coursework and be able to apply it in, in my daily work. So I think that was what was the most valuable part. Thank you so much, Helen. We really, really appreciate you dedicating your time to us this evening. You're welcome. Next slide, Sophia. All right. So I have the wonderful gift of being able to share two exciting new fellowship opportunities that we have for this fall 2023. So as we're thinking about kind of next steps, if you have enjoyed what you've heard this evening, if you're thinking, gosh, I, I think I want to learn more. Um, we are thinking about different ways that we can make the program affordable for you as you're thinking about uh, joining us. So our first fellowship that we're excited to announce this evening is our Dean Scholars Fellowship. This is for fall of 2023. Um, and we will choose four total high achieving incoming flex evening MBA and executive MBA students for this fellowship opportunity. Those selected would receive a $50,000 fellowship and also an opportunity to have one-on-one -on -one career coaching with executive leadership here at Rady. Next slide. And then we are also introducing our new equity, diversity, and inclusion fellowship. Um, this again is for students who are applying for fall of 2023. Again, four students will be selected and those selected will receive a $10,000 fellowship for their demonstrated work to impact equity, diversity, and inclusion in their communities. Um, we at, here at Rady really endeavor to foster a diverse and inclusive campus culture and want to invest in future leaders who are committed to working to improve their communities. So these are two really exciting new opportunities. And so if you are thinking, gosh, I might qualify for one of these, and now I'm thinking I should probably take the next step for admission. I'm going to turn it over to Sophia to share those steps for you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much, Audrey. Um, so some just information to keep in mind when you're applying. Um, we have two deadlines left for this year, uh, June 1st and July 15th. Um, we Everybody who applies is considered for a fellowship. Um, and you're also considered for additional fellowship if you are a UC alum or have a PhD. And, you know, if you have information or you have questions about what it is all of this means, um, please take a moment to schedule time with your graduate advising team or your graduate admissions team, which would be myself um, and my partner in crime who's not here, Ms. Christina Cook. We'd be more than happy to set aside some time with you to talk a little bit more about you know, what are your interests? Is this the right fit for you? You know, is now the right time? And then also, how do you take advantage of all these wonderful fellowships that we offer? So with that said, I would like to thank you all for coming, but also leave a little bit of time left for any questions that you guys might have for Miss Sylvia, for Miss Audrey regarding fellowships, or for our very own Helen Kim, our student, our current student at our Radies School. Um, if you want, you can raise your hand, you can drop them in the chat, and we'd be happy to kind of review anything, any questions that you might have about any of the information that we discussed this evening. I can't see any hands raised because I'm doing a screen share. So if you see any of them, guys, just let me know or come off mute and just say so. No questions? We covered, we answered all of them in tonight's event. I I just came off mute, so I'm Carol. Okay. Hi. I do Hi. have a question about the scholarships, which is, are they cumulative? So if you are eligible for more than one, do can you combine them or is it just one or another? Audrey, do you want to take this question? Sure. Yeah. So I know Sophia had mentioned some of the fellowship opportunities um, we do have that are available for students. Um, and I think I'm about to answer one of the questions that just popped up in the chat as well. So we do have a variety of fellowship opportunities. There's a Rady Merit Fellowship. And so all applicants are going to be uh, reviewed for meeting those criteria. So that's one part of it. Um, another fellowship that students are going to be 
automatically considered for is the UC Alumni Fellowship. And that is for students who graduate from UCSD for undergraduate or from any of the other UC schools. And that is a $10,000 fellowship. Um, outside of that, um, the Dean's Fellowship is going to be a standalone scholarship. So that would not stack on top of either of those others. Um, and we're considering with the uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion that that could be um, stacked on top as well. So, so those are some of the options. There are also, I know I've seen a few um, familiar faces and names that I'm aware of. We do also have a UCSD staff scholarship that I know some people um, are applying for as well as a few other opportunities and partnerships that we have with um, Rady Children's Hospital as well as UCSD Health Sciences. So those are some other opportunities for students as well. Thank you so much, Audrey. Okay, so <clears throat> there's one more question, it seems like from the fellowships. I think uh, Matt just answered your question in the chat for international students. Um, and then it says, there's another question, the fellowships that are available for UC alumni, are there any for any other UC campuses? Um, I'm not, I don't believe that we know what other UC campuses are offering in, in means of fellowship. Um, is that answer your question, Sarah? Question was more of if you're a UC, any UC alum, do you, are you eligible for the fellowship? And the answer is yes. yes so maybe. even if you went to UCLA, UC Davis, you're still eligible for that $10,000 fellowship um, if you accept your offer of admissions to Rady. Um, Pia had a question about additional electives outside of the curriculum. Um, so if you go beyond the 92 units, you do have to pay for that additional tuition. However, if you are under the 92 units and you wanna take classes at other schools across campus, um, if it's a graduate or professional school course, so if you wanted to take something at public health, sometimes we have had students take classes at the medical school or at, um, at Scripps, at Jacobs, the engineering school, you can apply up to 12 units towards your MBA degree. Um, it should, in theory, be a class that is related to your career development. Um, so if you come and say, I really want to take a basket weaving class, you're going to have to tell us why that is um, going to impact your career. Um, but we do, we, you know, we, we are pretty flexible and, and students do get creative sometimes um, when they take some of these classes. Um, but yeah, as long as it's under the 92 units, it's all included in, in tuition. Thank you, Sylvia. Okay. Um, when are admissions decisions communicated? Is this should be after it is that you complete your interview with your admissions representative. Um, we will make the, nom the decision whether to nominate you um, up to the graduate division and you should receive a response hopefully within three to four weeks, but as we get closer to our deadline dates, that timeline could be pushed back a couple of weeks, give or take, depending on the demand. And we usually do get busier. So that three to four weeks can turn into five to six weeks very easily and very quickly. Yeah, and we are really lucky that we do have rolling admissions. So as your application is complete, we'll begin that whole process. So a great, um, incentive to turn in your application early. The sooner it comes in completed, the sooner we can begin the review process. And I know we had one, one more question. How are applicants selected? Um, is this a question regarding the fellowships? Is that your question or is it just a question about admissions in general? In general. Um, Audrey, I'm not sure if you want sure. to take this one, depending on the program. Yes, yes. So um, with, with this, we're talking about our Flex Evening MBA as well as our Executive MBA program. And so um, our website kind of goes into the specifics for everything. But when you're thinking about an MBA program, in particular, which one might be a good fit for you, a great way to think about it is in terms of the experience that you have so far. So for our flex evening, that tends to be people who are kind of um, in, in more of the middle of their, of their career. And executive tends to be um, students who have 
a little bit more professional experience and tend to be a little bit further on in their career. Uh, so, so that's kind of a big part of it. What we are going to be looking for as we review your file is we want to make sure that you are academically qualified for the program, that you meet the requirements of uh, the university. And particularly, as I'm sure has kind of been woven through this, we are a very heavily um, STEM focused program. So we want to make sure that students that we are admitting have strong quantitative background. And so we'll be looking for evidence of that to make sure that you're going to be successful in the program. Now, that doesn't mean that if you haven't really taken a lot of quantitative coursework that you would not be qualified for the program. We just want to make sure that you are um, successfully prepared to, to do well in the class. Um, we have a great resource, MBA Math is what we will often share with students if they need to beef up some of their quantitative background. We want to make sure that you would be successful in the program, um, but we also want to make sure that uh, you have good experience professionally so that your time spent in the classroom will be more meaningful and you will really be able to apply what you are doing in the classroom to your professional life, just as Helen uh, shared that she's been able to do with the program. Thank you, Audrey. Sarah, did that answer your question? What Audrey just stated? Okay, perfect. I just wanted to make sure. Great. Uh, do we have any other questions? Actually, I have, I have a question. Uh, this one's for Helen. Um, I was wondering, uh, I'm starting uh, this program in the fall of uh, this year, and I was wondering if you had any, any advice on how to manage a full-time job and a part-time MBA simultaneously? It seems like it's a lot to do, so I was kind of hoping uh, you could share some wisdom with me. Very organized. <laughs> Noted. Um, and manage, manage your calendars ahead of time. Um, it, and I would be lying if I said it wasn't a challenge even for myself, because I actually have to travel quite a bit. So if you're going to, if you work full time, so your options are weekend classes or evening classes. So you really kind of have to think about what you have going on for that quarter. Um, I think the core classes, you really don't have a choice, but year two will be much easier because it's much more. Okay, great. Thank you. That was a great question. Thank you. Does anyone else have any more questions for Helen while we have her and while we have this last five minutes? She's got some great insights and perspective that I'm sure a lot of you want to know more about. So please feel free to drop your questions in the chat or take yourself off mute. Sorry to put you on the spot, Helen. No problem. And I'll be very honest with everyone. <laughs> All right, well, if no one has any other questions, I just wanna take a minute to thank you all for coming. Thank you, our speakers. Thank you, Helen, so much for sharing your perspective. Thank you, Miss Audrey, and thank you, Miss Sylvia as well. And thank you everyone for sharing your Thursday evening with us. We're so glad to see you and we definitely look forward to hearing from you soon. Have a great evening.